right, here is the video review for the Warbitron, what is this, WB04, I believe, uh, Whirlwind, WB01D, so not 4. Uh, WB01 is their designation for the combiner itself, um, and then D is the component, which in this case is Vortex slash Whirlwind. Uh, he comes in that nice packaging, uh, the silver packaging here, so that with, with the... Uh, with the inner uh, mirror box or window box is what I'm looking for inside there, um, and of course he has the next section of the uh, the combiner art on the back of it. So once uh, once their Bruticus or not Bruticus onslaught comes out, uh, you can make the full picture of Warbitron WB01. He also comes with a really nice laminated plastic bio card. He's a martial master. Uh, he is a sergeant in the army, or the a sergeant in uh, the Warbitron ranks, and there's his little ratings there, and some cool art on the front. Uh, you also get the instruction booklet for how to transform him. It's, it's just a really simple front and back affair with the instructions on it. So, uh, obviously he becomes a limb, and we'll go ahead and do that first on the way to robot mode, because it's a little easier that way. Um, so basically you just come up here and fold up the landing gear. Um, like this. And actually before we get to that, plug this in together. Uh, one minor issue with, with the uh, helicopter mode is that, uh, you can see right now it's working okay. But if you really give this thing a spin, it'll eventually, like this thing likes to move just a little bit while this is vibrating. And you can see this hits that. Um, and again, if you get it positioned right, actually, and actually if you spin it in such a way where if you have these angled, whichever way you have the, uh, the tips angled, if you spin it so that angled part hits it, sometimes it will, uh, you can see it will, instead of just getting stuck on it, it will, uh, start to cause that, uh, rear rotor to spin. But there, I mean, like it clears the tail, but, uh, you can't, it's, it's hard to just get them going, even if you have this lined up perfectly for clearance. Just, just the, the shaking of, of the thing the turning will cause this, is, this is loose enough to hit it. And it'll eventually get hung up on it. Which is just confusing because uh, you can see these pieces are removable. They plug in right here. And I don't know why they didn't move that plug to this rotating piece. Because uh, it would still sit back here. It would still attach. It would still be just fine. And it would give you that extra little bit of clearance where maybe this wouldn't be as much of an issue. Um, it's a minor complaint, but... Uh, I mean, like, who doesn't take your helicopter toy and just go whoosh, whoosh, and it's a lot more, it's a lot more frustrating to do with this guy, with that uh, banging in the way. Like I said, it doesn't really affect, it doesn't affect the helicopter mode just for display. It won't affect arm mode, and it doesn't affect the robot mode at all. But one of my favorite things to do with a helicopter toy is, you know, have it whoosh around and spin, spin the propeller. So uh, that's a little bit of a shame. So to go to arm mode, uh, from here it's not that hard. You just want to rotate or lift this up. These these guns can come off. You can see there's, they can uh, be held as hand weapons. You can flip that peg out. But uh, rotate this up and around or close this little, or actually it goes up. This little panel right here, close it up and rotate this piece around like that. You want to leave the, You want to try to leave the, uh, the guns attached, but uh, they do... Uh, pop off. They're just, they're just pegged into these little receptors right here. So rotate those around. And then these pieces right here come down. Just these. Actually got to untab them from here first. And then pull these pieces down and around. Like I said, and all this is stuff you're going to want to do on the way to robot mode anyway. So bring this down. And before those fit all the way down, you split the tail fin in half. And there's a couple little tabs here that'll help you do that. Uh, the tail fin, when you push it together, does tab in together pretty tightly. So you bring this down, and you rotate. You want to rotate just this ankle piece around, and it's okay if this comes with it. But uh, you can see where the hand's going to peg in on each side there. So you pu pull this around, and then fold this up flat against the side. And you're going to want to rotate that back like that. And same here, you can rotate this whole assembly. Rotate that back, and then just flip this up to the side, push those panels in, and these sit up there just like this. That's going to come up off again. But once those panels are out of the way, you can fold these back up to where they should be. So just fold those back up against the body. Oh, whoops, this way. 
pull this back up there like that. Um, you'll, get, you'll rotate the waist. Um, the feet come up. And they are on rotating pieces. You can kind of rotate them up. Hmm. Oh, there we go. You got to kind of get those so they, they rotate up flat like that. I guess it helps if you, if you push them up while you rotate them around like that. And same with these pieces on the back here. Just kind of flip them over, flip them up like that. And once that's rotated, you can see here's the combiner port right here. And there's a little lever to help you get it out before it ratchets. And it ratchets. It's got a nice tight ratchet in it. You can see it's not, the arm isn't drooping down there. And it's got a ratchet this way as well. And then once that's done, you'll take the hand piece, which I'm assuming is coming with Onslaught, since it hasn't come with any of the others, and you just snap that back together. And then you've got his arm piece. And there's something else I thought was going to happen with these blades, but apparently they just stay circular like that. Uh, with his arms up with the gun sticking straight up. Because um, there is there are some pieces that allow you to connect these swords together handle to handle. Um, and they're hiding up here. That's a little feature I'm going to show off here in a minute. But, um, but yeah, the, the, but the, the tab, the pegs on them are too small to fit tightly in this. And I'll, I'll show that off so, shortly. But I thought maybe you could attach them handle to handle and have them kind of fold up, like have them be straight, like uh, some of the helicopters do, where you fold these two together, fold these two together. And uh, the, these blades, instead of being the giant X, become kind of just two lines. But we'll see how, but, uh, I guess that didn't seem to work with the pegs I had. Uh, so we'll go ahead and push this back up into here. And then you go to robot mode. Like I said, the legs are pretty much done here. I uh, just want to flip the feet back over. Just like that. I'll flip the heels back over. Like I said, that's pretty much it done for the legs. We're going to go ahead and pop these off for the time being. Uh, so bring it around so the combiner port is on the front of the body. You'll notice by the purple waist pieces here. Uh, then you pull the, the, the gun unpegs, this whole gun right here unpegs, and you can kind of flip this whole piece around to the top, and there's the peg right there that allows him to uh, hold it in his hand. I guess you could have it sticking back out like that too, but we'll see. Um, and then this piece, this whole assembly comes up. You bring like, like the purple part, you bring this whole thing up like this, pull the cockpit down, and it doesn't really plug in anywhere. Uh, but friction and weight hold it down. He also does have this opening cockpit. I meant to show that in uh, helicopter mode, but his cockpit does open. And then uh, this, just this rotor piece, you can see there's his head right there. Uh, this gray rotor piece around the head lifts up and double hinges. And these tabs right here are going to plug into his back. You just kind of bring it down around like that, plug those into his back, and then this piece folds up into there. There is still a little bit of a gap there, but it's not super bad because he does have a solid torso all the way down. There's just a space there between that. Uh, rotate the arms around, bring them down here at this piece, rotate them up like that. Uh, this panel opens up and you flip the fist out. He does have wrist rotation, so that's nice. Uh, bring this down. And there's a nice little groove there to get your finger into. It doesn't take a whole lot of force to flip his hands out, which is nice because I've had some toys that where the hands come out like that and they're in there so tight that you can't really, it's really hard to get them out. But there he is in robot mode. And like I said, these can stay up here on his shoulders if you want. Uh, if they stay. Um, and you can plug this uh, gun into his hand. And like I said, if, you, if you'd rather have it not be quite so obtrusive on his, on his robot, you can flip this up. You can flip this peg down. Uh, he can hold it like that. And I, I feel like this kind of sits in front of that. And it works a little better for him as a gun, but it's entirely up to you how you want to do it. Um, these guns, like I said, can come off. There's a little peg up in here that if I can get it out, this is frustrating because there is a little peg here to... to get some friction on it it's like a tiny little nub there but because of where you're kind of pushing right on the center of uh rotation and uh it's hard to get out uh, let's see if we can get it out with a no that's too small but i'm gonna get my let's get a little blade out here uh let's see before anybody freaks out this is a very dull knife so i'm not worried about damaging anything but you can get under there 
and flip that peg out. And uh, once that's done, you can have him hold these in his hands as weapons, or you can peg him on here onto his arms, if you wish. Um, and like I said, each one of these blades comes out like this and forms a sword. And you can have him hold the swords normally, just like that, in his hand. Um, and also, like I said, there's a little secret storage place, because you also get in the pack, you get these two little clear yellow pieces. And on the front nose of this, if you open this up, this panel comes off, and you can actually store it in there. You want to have it in there like that. If you have the hole facing out, um, it won't close, so you want to have the hole going this way, and these two pegs sitting there like that. But you get two little pieces like this, and when you do that, you can plug the sword handles in uh, back to back, like that. And you can have him hold those in his hand, uh, which is a little difficult, or just, you know, have him hold it, you know, open up his hand here. You could have him grab it, have him hold it in his hand like that. You can attach him to his arms like that, um, or however you wish. Now, like I said, I thought maybe it would work somehow like this, where you could take two of these and then plug them in on each side of this for combiner mode. But this, and, and, you, and you can, but it, it doesn't stay in very well, that post. Whereas the swords, you can see, are stuck in there very well. Um, these, these, the pegs on, on this yellow piece are just a little too small to stay in there snugly. So it doesn't really work so much in combined mode as I'd hoped. But, uh, but it's just a little extra piece that you can use um, however you wish. And like I said, each side of the, uh, the helicopter nose, you can open them up and you can store them in there if you want. Like I said, it's just a matter of, you don't want to have it orient, oriented this way where you can see through it. You want to do it like that, uh, have the rear, the, the, the wider end of the helicopter nose, uh, the peg on that side facing up. It helps if you lay it down flat um, and down like that. And that, uh, that keeps it from getting in the way of the peg holes when you uh, put this piece back on. And that allows this piece to peg all the way back on. So it, it's 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 just a little extra bonus there. Um, like I said, it would have been cool if it functioned in alt mode. Or not alt mode, in combined mode. But uh, just the way it is, I guess. Let's put that back together. But yeah, there is uh, Warbatron W. B01D uh, Whirlwind, uh, obviously their version of Vortex. Um, he's got a ball jointed head up here, which is nice. Um, he's got the universal uh, shoulders. There is actually that extra joint right there in the middle of the bicep for transformation. He does have a, a swivel just above the elbow, uh, hinge elbows. He's got the opening fingers. Uh, the fingers are all one piece um, and a rotating wrist, which is nice. Uh, rotating waist, uh, universal hips, thigh swivel, uh, standard hinge knees, and uh, the feet are on ball joints, uh, You don't get, uh, which obviously lets you get some tilt to them, but uh, the ankle, it's, uh, this center piece doesn't really tilt that much, so uh, the, the, the benefits you get from having the toes and heels tilt uh, is a little offset by that solid center piece. So yeah, I wish, that, I wish those yellow pegs pegged in more securely to the rotor, uh, just so you could get a couple alternate uh, blade orientations in arm mode, or even in robot mode. Uh, but I like that you can store them in there so you don't have these little pieces just rattling around anywhere. Um, I do wish these were a little bit more secure in these hinge pieces up here because, like I said, it, it doesn't take a whole lot of effort for these to just pop right out um, during transformation. If you take them off beforehand, put them on at the end, you're fine, but... Uh, all the instructions show it transforming with them attached, and they do like to pop off. Uh, other than that, it's a, it's a nice representation of Vortex. I like the head sculpt, um, and it fits with the rest of the line. I don't have any of the other ones to compare them to. Uh, all of those were on loan, and they're off somewhere else right now. So, uh, so yeah, I, I can show you here he is with uh, Leader Megatron. Uh, and he does kind of look good with Leader Megatron, so there's that. But yeah, there is Warbatron's uh, Whirlwind. Ha <laughs> ha! A quick update real quick. Uh, as I was putting these away, I realized that the swords have these little bits on the side of them, on both sides of the sword, that 
They're squarish, but they're about the size of the peg holes, which means you can use these, you can store the swords uh, on his, uh, on these peg holes on his arms if you want. Um, well, that does get caught behind the gun. Uh, in, in, in either orientation, let me get both of these off of here. So you could store two swords on each arm if you wanted, uh, which is kind of cool. Uh, just as a way to store those blades. And on top of that, because you can peg these two together, now in uh, arm mode, if you want, if you want to have just the, the kind of blades, you can uh, put two together like this and just plug them in on one side and that gives you enough space where that doesn't uh, interrupt the rotor at all. So you could plug like to these two on up here, these two on up here, and have that uh, that straight rotor line that I was talking about. Um, I, I was like I said, I, I was expecting it to be something like where you could peg them together like this, and uh, maybe something like this, and and have one on each side in arm mode. Just plug it in like that to look okay. But uh, that actually works if you if you use the uh, the tabs on the side. So. Uh, so bonus, that's kind of cool. Um, I'm, like I said, it was just one of those things, like as I was putting this back in the box, my brain went, wait a minute. And uh, so there you go. So there, there's, there's another little use for those little yellow pieces. And uh, I think that's cool.